come back and go. I'm gonna come back and go with this. What bacon? Yeah, it's called simple bacon. Siz uh, it's a little sizzle. A little sizzle. Does it make you hungry for bacon when you? <laughs> yeah, they suckered me into it. Just to
to worship out of habit or obligation or to see and be seen, all of these reasons we come to worship. But we come because God beckons us to come, to come and lay all of our needs at God's feet, to acknowledge that God is there each and every moment of our life. And so I want you to just kind of get in that space of worship, to remember that Jesus is here, here for you, here for your needs, here for all of those ways that we get strengthened through worship. Lord, thank you for this reminder that we come because you beckon us to come, to be here with you, to just be in your presence is an amazing gift and a privilege the grace and mercy that washes over us. So Lord, help us to remember that we come purely out of a, a need to worship you, a desire to be with you. And Lord, as we feel that sense of, of grace wash over us, we can't help but shout. We can't help but share that joy to let it kind of emanate off of us as we go from here. And so we, we thank you for this house that you have called us into to come and worship you. Amen. Let's sing.
forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the prisoners, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. to welcome you to New Life. We're so glad you're here and here. So everybody turn and say hello to friends on Facebook. So glad to have you join us. So glad that's an option always. Uh, so we're glad to be together in a community uh, in, in person as well as online. So thanks for being here. Uh, we're so glad to just have this time together as we begin this season of Lent. And uh, I encourage you to kind of find ways that you're going to stay connected and go deeper in this season. So uh, one of those ways is just having this time together in worship and uh, celebration. So let's continue to sing out God's praise. Let's sing. Right now I feel a little overwhelmed. Right now I could really use some help right now i don't feel like it is well with my soul i've tried to find a way around the mess i've prayed in faith that the night would end right here when I just can't understand, I lift my hands. Hallelujah. When the storm is relentless, hallelujah. When the When the battle is endless, in 
seated. And so we are so glad to have this time together in worship and, and bring to God those, those things that are a hallelujah even here moment. So we're glad to be here. And we have um, some time for kids to gather. So Miss Jessica, come on up. Good morning. <laughs> How's everybody today? Good, good. So today we're going to find out how strong you are. Ready? So, do you think you're stronger than an ant? Yeah, okay. How about a beetle? Yeah? Okay. I have something in this bag. Do you think you're stronger than something that's in this bag? Doesn't it fit? Okay, ready? Are you stronger than this piece of candy? Okay, good. So that was too easy. <laughs> so I don't want to see how strong we are with our muscles this morning. I want to see how strong we are on the inside. Mm -hmm. And today, our story about Jesus is about temptation. Do you know what that is? No? I know it's a pretty big word. It means that you know you shouldn't do something, but you really want to. Like if this was just sitting on the table at home and you know you shouldn't have candy before dinner, but it just looks so good. So there, I've definitely had a lot of temptations and all the grown-ups in here definitely have too. So today, this is going to be our little temptation. I'm going to give you each a piece of candy and until church is done and until you're in the parking lot, you can't eat it or unwrap it. Do you think you can do that? Awesome. But ask your mom and dad first and grandma and grandpa's <laughs> before you eat candy. Okay? So let's do it. So if you do, you'll be stronger too in just one little, little, little goal that you got past. Okay? Let's pray. We can do repeat after me. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Give us the strength. Give us the strength. To resist doing those things. Resist doing those things that we should not do. That we should not do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Perfect. Let's go do a craft. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I just I don't need chocolate. Russ will take one. You can't eat it till you're in the parking lot, though. I'm going to watch. <laughs> so um, for these Sundays in Lent, I wanted us to gather around certain objects that hopefully we will interact with throughout our week. So they can kind of help us focus on the message, not just on Sunday, but throughout the week. I think her microphone is still on. Hey, Jessica. She can't hear me. Okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have this kind of focus um, on an everyday object. So today, obviously, the focus is bread. So I, I have this love affair with bread. Um, is there anything better than the smell of bread in the oven? I mean, right? And you take it out, soft, warm butter on a just out of the oven bread. I mean, like literally my mouth is water. I'm so glad we have breakfast this morning. <laughs> and I have to say, I've been gluten-free for a couple of years now, and there is nothing like the torture of, of smelling bread that you can't or don't want to eat. They've come a long way with gluten-free bread, but it's just not the same. I got this candle that uh, said it had the scent of warm buttered bread and it's been sitting in my office for the past couple weeks. And there, that is also a unique sense of torture to smell something that really isn't there. Bread is kind of everywhere, right? It's, it's ubiquitous in our diets. It's kind of the heart of everything we love, right? But did you ever think about how much bread is mentioned in scripture? 
both literally and kind of symbolically, to talk about God's providing. I looked it up 492 times. Bread is mentioned in scripture. Think about it. The the unleavened bread as the Israelites escape from Egypt, the manna that's provided every morning in the wilderness for them. John talks about Jesus as the bread of life. And did you know in Asian cultures where bread is not as prevalent as rice, it's translated that I am the rice of life. Because that's the heart of what that word is all about, is that I am, I am the center And then, of course, we're taught to pray using that phrase, give us today our daily bread. And we gather around bread every time we meet. But today, we have an interesting phrase in this temptation. Again, we always start Lent with the story of Jesus' temptation. As he is thrust out into the wilderness, so too are we in the wilderness of Lent. And so how do we have what we need to sustain our journey of faith? So that's where we always start. We start with Jesus' temptation, and we're in the Gospel of Luke. And so it's interesting to note what Jesus says about bread in this text. But I want you to kind of notice what you hear. Uh, Where does the Holy Spirit stop your attention in this story? A story that you've probably heard a number of times. This is Luke chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority for it has been given over to me and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, temptation. It's... Certainly something that we all face along with Jesus. This is not something unique to him. Most of the time, we don't do as good a job of resisting temptation as Jesus does here. But I find it helpful to know that we are all in the same boat. So what are some things that you noticed as I read that story? Maybe it's one that you've heard before. Maybe you notice something new. Go ahead and. Yeah. Right, and, and I think the devil knew that. And so that first temptation is all about being hungry. You can turn this stone into bread. Why don't you just do it? What else? What else did you notice? You didn't know you were going to be pop quiz today. I noticed um, a few things because, you know, I've got a piece of paper right here. <laughs> 
So I, I think it's important to notice where we are in the Gospel of Luke. Matthew and Mark also have this story. John does not have it. And it's in a similar place. It's right after Jesus is baptized, he's led into the wilderness. But in Luke, he sandwiches in between there Jesus' genealogy. He talks about whose son he is. How is he related? How is he part of this community? And Luke's saying there, we are all a part of this. We're a part of his baptism and the claim that God has on us, but we are also part of this temptation that the devil is real and alive and trying to get us to walk away from that claim that God has on us in baptism. So Luke says, you are all a part of this. Did you also notice, who is it that leads Jesus into the wilderness? Is it the devil? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Interesting. Yeah, I gave you a huge clue. <laughs> Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, and it's the Spirit that leads him into the wilderness. Now, for, for Luke, this is really important. Luke and then his companion volume, Acts, everything is about the Spirit. The Spirit is the center of everything. It fills people. It sends them out. It is the impetus for everything that happens in the early church is always centered in the Spirit. And so Jesus being full of the Spirit, of course the Spirit is the one that will send him out and go with him into the wilderness. And again, Luke's word to us is, you are not alone in those moments of wilderness, in those moments of temptation and testing. You are not alone. If your claim is if the claim on you is made at baptism, that does not end. The Spirit is with you always. So I think it's important to notice, yes, Jesus is tempted, but what tempts us? I won't make you answer that out loud. Because the list is long, right? Maybe it's something like bread or food. Maybe it's those distractions like TV, video games, our phones. Maybe it's laziness. It's nice to be lazy every once in a while. Maybe it's money, power, authority, control, sex. I mean, there's, the list is, is really long of the amount of temptations that we face every day. But what's at the heart of every temptation. I think the heart of every temptation is that it pulls us away from center. It pulls us away from the heart of God. It pulls us away from the, the perfect plan that God might have for us. Anyone who has fallen prey to temptation, and we gotta be honest that that includes every single one of us, anytime we cave to that temptation, it's most certainly about a lie that we momentarily believe. If I eat that donut, I'm going to feel satisfied. Cheating that person will make me feel momentarily powerful and like I have control over them. If I just cut this corner, I'll get to success faster. I'm not really doing any harm by gossiping about that person. All of it pulls us away from God's heart, puts us in the driver's seat, and in effect says, I don't need God. That's the heart of all temptation. And if I'm honest, that's the heart of my biggest temptation. It's bread, yes, I'll admit that fully. But even bigger is my desire, my utter need to be in control. I face it over and over and over again. That, that song, The Heart of Worship, like I have to keep that in mind all the time. 
It's not about me. It's about God. It's about Jesus. I have fallen prey to this sense that I have all the capability too many times to count. In fact, like I was just noticing this week, I spent so much time kind of figuring out all these Lenten things for you guys to go deeper in your faith so that, to be honest, I could be seen as a great pastor, right? Thank you. Right. But that, I mean, like, why? Why? I can't do it for that. I realized earlier this week that I didn't have a plan for me to go deeper. I mean, darn it. Why? It catches me unawares every single time. The temptation to think I'm in control and God's not catches me every single time. And it stinks. It stinks that the tempter keeps coming, right? Three times in this reading, he keeps coming. And then it ends. The devil leaves him until an opportune time. The devil's going to keep coming. This is the essence of what Jesus confronts in the wilderness. The devil always wants to present this idea that we don't need God. We're pretty capable. We can do it on our own. Isn't that the essence of what Adam and Eve found in the garden? If you eat this, you're going to know everything that God knows, and then you won't need God. That sounds pretty good. And I, the devil knows who Jesus is, even though in the, in the text it says, if you are the son of God. But the Greek there is really, he knows it's almost as if he's saying, if you are the son of God, and I know that you are, then do these things. Then rely on your own power instead of God's. The devil is well aware of who Jesus is. But the temptation is, will Jesus use the power and authority that the devil knows he has for his own gain? to sustain himself, to present himself as powerful, to kind of trot, you know, know that the angels will catch him if he jumps off the temple? Or will he rely fully on God? That's our temptation always. Will we rely on God? Or will we live out the lie that we can do it ourselves? I don't think there's any mistake that the prayer is about daily bread. Daily. I'm going to say that again. Daily we need to remember. And maybe even sometimes moment to moment we need to remember that God is our guidance and strength. I think that's why this connection to bread this week will be so powerful. Every time you come into contact with bread this week, remember that God is your provider. God is your strength. God is your power. God is all that you need. That daily bread is given so that you remember God provides over and over and over, and you don't need to be the one in control. You don't need to be the one who operates on their own strength. One does not live by bread alone. Yes, bread sustains us, but it's God who gives us life and life abundantly. So as we come forward this morning and receive the bread of life, as you interact with bread throughout this week, I hope every time it's this reminder that God is with you, 
that God's spirit will be with you through those times of testing and temptation, through those moments where you think you can operate in your own strength. Those times where we need to be reminded that it is the sustaining and providing power of God that carries us. Indeed, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. God, it's so easy to fall into temptation. But it's just as easy to fall into your arms. And so, Lord, we ask that you will call us back to you in those moments where we struggle, in those moments where we think we can operate under our own strength. Call us back to that heart of worship, God. Call us back to that sense that you are all that matters. And in those moments of testing and trial, remind us that we have been claimed by you, that your spirit is with us always. And Lord, we thank you for this moment to remember these things, that it carries us into our week. And Lord, give us those reminders throughout this week that you are our provider. All this and all the prayers and concerns we have about testing and temptation, we know that you will be with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. I got you a 
higher than any other. I got a healer, awesome and mighty. I got, I got, I got a greater. always. Thank you. Let's share that peace with one another. Uh, if you're comfortable, hugs and kisses, peace signs, peace to those on Facebook. We hope you'll share that peace in the comments below. Peace, peace, peace. Great to be here. And you may be seated as you're able, as you're ready. So glad to be here together. Um, as I mentioned, uh, thanks to Brian and Linda Syme, we have breakfast this morning, so we hope you'll uh, stay and have that. Thank you. Um, so we hope you'll uh, share that time of fellowship after, wor after worship today. Also, after worship, we're going to be discussing a, a really wonderful book. It's a hard subject, but a really easy read, so we hope even if you can't join us today, uh, you can come back next week. We're going to be having another discussion about it, uh, but we hope you'll read this book anyway. It's called I'm Still Here by Austin Channing Brown, uh, so we hope you'll take, an, take advantage of reading that. Um, we're going to meet in the classroom after worship, um, so maybe grab your breakfast and come and join us in there for that discussion today. Uh, Kathy Michaelis and Iris Christensen are leading that discussion. And there are discussion questions and more information on the entry table if you want to grab those if you didn't already. Um, can everybody turn and look at the booth? Maybe you don't often see this booth up there. <coughs> Wave, Deb. Wave, Ted. <laughs> um, and, and Cheryl. Cheryl is on. There's, there's so many things that happen up in that booth that enable worship to go well. We need some extra folks up there. We need some people that will be willing to be trained. Deb is, is being trained right now. It's not hard, right, Deb? Right? It's, it's not hard. It, there, there are things that you would need to know, but it is not hard. Um, it enables us to present worship on Facebook Live, to do a good sound mix, to have these screens work. Um, so it's essential. Um, so I'm just asking for you to prayerfully consider being part of that team. Um, and we will train you, we'll get you up to speed, but we really need that help uh, in order to present a really well done worship, and that's what we want. So um, we we'll hope you'll consider that. This afternoon, we are having a family movie event. If you didn't already know that, we're going to watch Encanto, because we do talk about Bruno here. Um, so... Uh, Nobody gets that joke if you haven't seen the movie, but if you have, you totally get it. Um, so we're going to watch the movie in here at 3 o'clock and then have pizza and discussion afterwards. Um, so we hope you'll come, and that's open to everybody. So just come at 3 o'clock, and we'll, uh, we'll share that time together. We have a wonderful uh, new Holy Spirit Lending Library. A uh, family gifted us um, a whole bunch of wonderful books. Is it okay if I share who that is? Okay, um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, um, so there's a wonderful amount of books, and, and it's a perfect time for you to grab a new book to go deeper in your Lenten journey with God. So um, check that out, because there's a lot of great stuff. Um, also, for those Lenten practices, we do have the labyrinth available in the community room, or in the recreation center. Uh, hopefully, you know, the weather's getting nicer. Don't forget we have an outdoor labyrinth and a prayer room and this space. So lots of ways for you to um, just spend a little more time with God in this season. So we hope you'll take advantage of that. Do take the um, sheet home that's on the entry table. It tells you more about these things. But again, so glad to be together today and share this time. Um, and one of the, the biggest values, I think, for, for this time of worship for me is when we can lift our prayers up to God. So Let's spend some time in prayer. Lord God, we can face all kinds of temptations every day, but your spirit is so readily available to help us resist that. So thank you that 
through your word and this time of worship, we can stay tuned into the Spirit's voice instead of the voice of temptation. Lord, be with the church, capital C, around the world as millions gather on this Sabbath day, many gathering in places that are unsafe. So embolden them to preach your word and sing praises and never let us take for granted the freedom we have to worship. Lord, we continue to watch as events unfold in the Ukraine. If peace is possible, it's only so because you've guided the process. We pray for the people of Russia who don't want war, for other countries in Eastern Europe who welcome refugees, for all nations negotiating the many possible ways to support all of the needs. Lord, thank you for this congregation, for the joy we have in seeing each other week after week. We're so thankful to feel we're coming out of a time of fear and distance brought on by disease. Continue to bless the health of this nation, community, and congregation. We also want to be aware of those whose health is not great right now. We lift prayers to you for for them and for other situations around us. We pray for Rihanna and her healing, for Megan's health and for Megan and Scott as they get ready to welcome their baby girl, for Deb and Ken's friend Don, for the Sonbachen and Olson family as they continue to mourn Barb, continued healing for Jenny Olson, Prayers for Susan Berger for her health to improve. And Stephanie Peck lifts up prayers for her grandfather battling cancer. Lord, all those prayers on our hearts and minds, those that don't even have words yet, we know that your spirit carries them to your ears. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you are directed to come forward and receive, there's a, a cup with wafer on the top and grape juice. If you do need gluten-free wafers, please let me know. I have some. But come and know that all are welcome. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, the earth is filled with His glory, we stand and lift 
up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's resound. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. In every Everyone sing, holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. is bestowed on you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's send ourselves out into God's world, Strong Tower. Yeah. 
And now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my strong tower.